<sighs> listen, listen. <sighs> it's just not it. It's, it's, I'm not prepared for this. I'm not not prepared. That wait, that did, did I get that down? Did I get that down? I feel like I did. You know how like every YouTuber just like walks in, just like in size and everything. He just be like, ah, and sit downs when they like going through something. I feel like I got that down. I think I did. That was like the one thing I was missing for YouTube. But anyway, listen, y'all. Listen, listen. Okay, I know that we have hit the light goal for me to react to this channel. I know we did. As a matter of fact, hold on. You know what I think I'm more mad at? I'm more mad at, at people who were, who were reminding me that we hit the like goal. Hold on. Actually, you know what? I'm about to pull up. I'm about, I'm about to call y'all out. Who, who, who reminded me that we hit the like goal? Hold on one second. Hold on. Wait a minute. All right, listen. Some girl named G Wapo. She said, Larry, look like you're gonna have to react to Mr. Haunted. Well, she meant to say, uh, Mr. Nightmare. Cause you hit over 150 likes. She just had to remind me. And not only her, someone else had to remind me. Listen. And you, Faith, Faith, if you're watching this, all right, I, you try to remind me too. You try to remind me too that I have to react to this channel. I know guys, I know I have to react to this channel now and I'm so upset, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. I don't want to do this. I really don't. This stuff really scares me. It's getting worse than horror games. You know what the more messed up part is? I'm going to be watching this. Well, this, this is going to be uploading on my birthday. Well, today's not, today's not my birthday. Yeah, today's not my birthday. But the day you're seeing this, September 8th, that's my birthday. And I have to edit it on oh, my birthday. And it's going to be uploaded. And like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Shut your bitch ass up! Without further ado, let's go ahead and react to some videos from Mr. Nightmare. This is going to give me some nightmares. But let's go right here and get right into this. Let's go. All right, guys. So first video for today, we're going to be reacting to three... Scary True Mansion Horror Stories by no other than Mr. Nightmare. Now, Mr. Nightmare, um, like I said, I never watched your stuff before. I saw some glimpses and everything. That stuff scares the mess out of me. It scares me more than, like, playing video games, like, scary video games. It scares me, like, more than, like, Outlast. I hate stories like this, but this is gonna piss me off. I know it because it's, it's, it's gonna be some stupid behind kid going into this damn place and he has no business going in there and it's gonna be like him just, I don't know, getting touched on or something. Huh? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but let's go right ahead and get right to this video. Let's, let's go. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, There's shit. this abandoned mansion in Toronto. Wait, 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 it looked immaculate based on the pictures, and we were intrigued to go check it out. It was 10 miles north from us, so the drive wasn't bad. The mansion sat on a big open grass plain, with pine trees and other foliage surrounding the perimeter of the property, acting as a natural fence or just a wall of privacy from the outside. Okay. My friends who I'll call Chad and Brad for this story followed close behind me as I... God. Yo, look at my... Yo, I'm crying already. Oh my, I'm crying already. I hate these stories. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I hate these stories. I hate these stories so much. I, I, I really, I really hate these stories so much. Okay, bro. It's always a guy named Chad. It's always a guy named Chad. Chad, get out of there. Get out of there. You always doing something stupid, Chad. Dang, come on, Chad. Damn the way up the large gravel driveway towards the front of the unfinished house. By the looks of it, construction on the structure had been abandoned when it was near completion, as the outside foundation seemed to be finished. Our mutual friend who found out about the place had told us that he hopped through a back window that was left unlocked, so that's what we looked for. 
The unlocked window turned out to be in the kitchen, right over the counter, so one at a time we squeezed through the window, crawling onto the counter and then down to the ground. First impressions in the kitchen, almost immaculate, minus a few of the cabinet doors sprawled out on the floor as if they had yet to be installed, and just things like sheetrock boards laying around. But everything seemed new, and it was a shame the construction was abandoned. The three of us kind of went our own directions in the house. I went towards the living room, which again was almost pristine. It was a huge room that transitioned into the dining room. Okay. And from there, a wide hallway with at least ten different doors. Damn. My friends were already checking out some of the rooms in this hallway. I peeped into each room and realized most of them were bedrooms. At the end of the hall was a three-door garage. The last door in the hall before the garage was the basement. I oh called to Brad God, and Chad that I was go. checking out the basement. No! Acknowledgement from at least one of them. The basement had this bizarre spiral staircase, so when I got to the bottom, I couldn't even see the door at the top. There were no windows down there, so besides my flashlight, it was pitch black. It was a completely unfinished basement. Pieces of drywall everywhere, unfinished wood foundation where walls should be, but the basement was huge. Like, there were multiple sections down there. It was big enough to fit a basketball court and more. Damn. Then I came across this back room with a few storage containers. I was here to explore after all, so I curiously started lifting the lids off. Of course the you're there to explore, of course. The first two seemed to contain building tools and supplies like wood planks. But then I heard something from one of the other containers. It was like something caused the container to make a bump sound. Could it be an animal? Or was I just hearing things? I went to the container and noticed the lid was not sealed on this one, as it wasn't sitting perfectly snug on the top. As I bent over to try and lift the lid, it lifted without me touching it, and I heard a whispering noise. I fell back. With no, no, no! I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm crying. Ignore the pimple. Ignore the pimple. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm oh my god. I saw a smiling woman looking at me. The only thing lifting the container up was her head. She looked at me, laughed, and said peekaboo, and she laughed some more. I ran to the top of the stairs, but the basement door was now locked. I banged on it for my friends to open it up, but they were apparently messing with me. I heard creaks on the spiral staircase below me. I couldn't see her yet, but I could hear her laughing getting closer, and she was mumbling incomprehensible things. I screamed at the top of my lungs to please help me, and Chad finally opened the door. Chad, good job, Chad. I looked back for half a second, greeted by this ghostly, skinny figure of this pale woman looking up at me, almost at the top step. I slammed the door shut and locked it. Chad saw the woman too, and we bolted for the front door. We didn't care about leaving it open. The three of us got to the edge of the property to talk. After an hour of just sitting in my car thinking and talking, I agreed to go back inside and unlock the basement door. As scary as what I witnessed was, I didn't want to be responsible for someone dying down there. But when we got back inside, the basement door was wide open. I promise you we locked that door. Oh, right. It made no sense. We once again bolted back outside towards the car and drove home to never return to that mansion again. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, okay. Alright, wait. Okay. Okay, now it's listen, if you see me look up, look look just look at the camera. I'm checking to like make sure there's nobody watching me from, you know, just I'm just checking to make sure there's nobody inside of me or anything because I don't like with stories like these I always feel like it's somebody next to me I always feel like that that's why I hate these stories we lived in an upper middle class neighborhood lots of space between each house all the houses on our street were very nice but there was one abnormally large house okay. it was closer to a mansion it sat right across the street from us and my bedroom window could look across to the windows of the mansion since our street was incredibly low traffic, our parents let us play soccer in the street. So my two friends Brian and Zeke were playing soccer one sunny day. It was usually just the three of us, so we had this kind of free-for-all version of soccer that we made up. Eventually the ball was kicked onto the property of the mansion, so I ran over to get it. When I picked up the ball, I looked at all the windows to see if the house owner was possibly witnessing me on his property. But at one of the top windows, was a young boy who looked to be about our age. I hurried off the property and back to my friends. What, did he scare you? I asked them if they had ever seen the kid who lives in that mansion, and they hadn't. 
The second time I looked back at the window, the boy was no longer there. It wasn't for a while after that, probably a month, that I was in my room playing Nintendo. And for whatever reason, I got up to get something. And I looked out my window across to the mansion. And I saw that boy at the window again. He was surely looking at me, all the way from across the street. It kind of creeped me out. I walked away from the window to ignore it. Why hadn't I ever seen that kid outside before? The kidnapping kids. Think of it, why hadn't I ever really seen the owners of that house? I That's asked my so parents weird. about the boy across the street. They said they were pretty sure there was no boy in that house. So the next time Brian, Zeke, and I were playing in the street, we were thinking of potential fourth players to have a real game. I had an idea. I ran to the front door of that mansion and rang the bell. A 50-something-year-old woman answered. I asked if her son wanted to play soccer with us. She son? What son? She and said, What son? <gasps> I replied, The boy was always at the upstairs window. Oh, shit. I can't describe the look on her face besides shock and fear. <gasps> she asked me what the boy looked like, and after my best description, a tear rolled down her cheek, and she put her hands over her mouth. She brought me upstairs to the room where I kept seeing the boy. It was a boy's bedroom. She showed me a picture of a kid and asked me if this was the boy I was seeing. And I said yes. Guys. <laughs> Look at my eyes. <laughs> Look at my eyes. Oh my God. I will blame allergies a little bit with this. I will. I have again, like when my allergies act up, um, my eyes just start tearing up and everything. But she told me that was her eight-year-old son, Charlie, who died 10 years ago. That woman living there had been alone ever since she lost her son and husband. She believed what I said because I nor my parents would have ever had any way of knowing about her son. She didn't tell me or my parents what happened to her husband or son. As sad as this all was, it was still horrifying. There was one other time I saw the boy. I was in my room, months later, and I looked out my window to the woman's mansion across the street. There he was again, at the upstairs window. I could tell he was looking at me. I shut my blind with force and tried to forget about it. It still sends shivers up my spine when I think back on it. Oh hell no, we're not doing this heartbeat stuff in my ear. Nah, we're not doing it. Okay, low breather, low breather, low breather, low breather, low breather, low breather. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna give y'all a backstory of why I am scared of these stories, okay? Now, I thought I was more so uh, terrified of, <clears throat> of like, scary games because growing up, I've always played, like, uh, games from John Wolf. He's actually the person I've started watching scary games by. That's why I kind of started playing scary games. I started watching him. Then I went to go play, I mean, I went to go watch uh, Jay from Cubs Bouts. Cub, Cub, Scouts, Cub Scouts, I started watching him, and then he really inspired me to be a YouTuber and, like, you know, play scary games, but other than that, I've been watching, like, videos from, like, Poise and, like, a little bit of Corey Kenshin, too, like, I've been watching, like, all those videos with, like, no hesitation, lights off, in, like, on this bed, like, it'll be, like, 11 o'clock at night, my headphones on, and I will have no problem watching it, I will have no problem at all just watching it, it's... I don't know, I'm just weird like that. But when it comes to this stuff, when it comes to like stories that are actually like um, not animated, you know, like just not thought about, you know. I mean, yeah, like these stories could be made up and everything, but it's the fact that like it's fiction, you know? It's the fact that it's it's not animated, you know, it's not like a cartoon or anything. It's the fact that it's it's actually, you know, like film with a camera. Even though like this is only storytelling, this is not like somebody like doing a little skit or something or like you're seeing something, but like it's the fact that you're seeing all like this and it's really getting to me because I'm like, oh, 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 this is real. You know, that's why I'm that's why I'm feeling like that. But when I was like growing up, I I, I know I mentioned this in one video, but I used to like watch a show called uh, what was it called? It was called like The Outsiders or something. It was like played on like Cartoon Network or something. I remember like the first time it airing, they would like made a whole big deal about it and everything. Some kids going around and like investigating like uh, haunted places, whatever. Some stupid kids, you know that that shouldn't even be there. You know, some stupid kids, obviously. But they were going around and just investigating stuff and all this other stuff. And then I remember the first thing they investigated, the first episode. The first episode was them going to a prison. They went to a prison, 
it was a band it wasn't like alcatraz or anything it wasn't that it was it was some other prison but you just saw like like just you start hearing noises all this other stuff i'm sorry i thought like i'm, I'm tearing up like it's i'm acting up just talking about it but they just like they just started hearing stuff see stuff and it made me on edge after that after that I can never watch like uh what's what's those shows called that that they investigate like haunted stuff you know like uh ghost but not ghostbusters but you know like those ghost shows that like they just investigate places you I don't know the damn names just because I don't want to watch them but I never wanted to watch them it scares the mess out of me I hate it so much so me seeing this stuff hearing this stuff evenly it scares me it gets to me. It, it oh my god it gets to me but i feel like i need to let you in on that because like i'm going through it i know i look a mess right now because i'm just i'm 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 tearing up i'm sweating well i'm sweating because it's hot in the room but um the nose is running like i'm sorry but let's let's get right to this video oh my god all right there was once oh hell no for a friend of a family friend Man, that should look nice. In this case, I should call it Mansion Sit because the family was absolutely <laughs> loaded and the mansion sat on the rich side of town in front of a huge lake. I was 21 and it just seemed like a cool job to have for a week. <laughs> the family's one rule was to throw no parties and no more than two guests at any time, which even that, that I thought house? was generous of them. Oh, well, yeah. The father's name was Benjamin. And that's the only name you'll need to know. Benjamin. Ben left me a list of things to keep track of every night. Benjamin. Which included feeding the two cats and two parrots, watering the plants, among other things that really won't contribute to the story. The house was a half hour from home, so instead of just driving there and back every day, I opted to just sleep in one of the guest bedrooms, which they offered to me after all. <laughs> the first day there, I got there very late. So it was a short one that got me kind of warmed up for what to expect the week ahead of me. After doing the insignificant amount of morning chores, I hopped in the pool they had in the backyard. Mm. The pool literally overlooked a gorgeous, tranquil lake. And even with the thought of getting to enjoy this unbelievable house for a week, I was still incredibly jealous. As I was in the pool, I noticed through the giant floor-to-ceiling windows to the living room Somebody walking inside. I jumped out from the pool noises. freaking out. I ran to grab the towel and dry myself for a second before storming inside yelling excuse me. I didn't see anyone in the living room, so I entered the kitchen, and there was a fairly large Hispanic woman who looked to be about 35 to 40. She was just standing there as if waiting for me. I asked her who she was and why she was here while trying to keep myself composed and confident. She said in a thick accent that she was the maid who came every day to clean the floors and stuff. She introduced herself as Eliza. I instantly felt a sense of relief and introduced myself as Mike. Now, let me stop you right there, sweetheart. Now, obviously, I know um, you are not who you say you are. Oh my, every time I close my eyes, I feel like there's somebody just watching me. Jesus. And I know I'm not, I know, I know something about you, Eliza. Well, Eliza, 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 I don't know. Obviously, you aren't who you say you are with a name like that. What kind of name is Eliza? Eliza? I heard of Elijah. That's a male. Now, sweetheart, if you if you a male, but they, he saw you as a woman, you got some explaining to do. But other than that, um, I know you know who you say you are because of your name, sweetheart. You could have came up with a better name than that. Damn, try Emily. Damn, we all don't like Emily. She spoke in as little words as possible. I don't think her English was too good. But she basically said she was going to clean the floors in the kitchen and living room now. I said that was completely fine and let her do her thing. All right. I asked her how she got in the house, and she said she had her own copy of the key. So, that was that. I went back out to the pool for a little longer to let her do her thing. When I got out from the pool, I dried up and took a shower. After my shower, I fed the animals again. Why didn't you call the owners? Easier than the cat, surprisingly. I didn't see the maid again, but I didn't really want to get in her way and have awkward small talk with someone who could barely speak English anyway. 
had a couple friends over that night because everyone was eager to see the place. Oh, he was. I respected his. their rules of only two guests at a time. Oh, he had two girls? Even the best tour I could. Then we kind of just chilled in the game room they had, played some air hockey and pool table, and drank a little bit. That's it? When I told my Ain't friends about the, the cleaning lady scaring the hell out of me, they both found it insanely suspicious. Like, why wouldn't Ben have told me about the cleaning lady? <laughs> exactly. They brought up a good point, so I shot Ben a text, asking about the cleaning lady. You're just now, dude, that, like, that's, that's literally what I was just thinking. What? No, never mind. No, let me stop thinking black. Let me, let me stop doing that. Stop. He didn't answer right away, and I didn't want to call. <sighs> My friends wanted to sleep over, but I didn't want to push it. I had no idea if they had cameras in the house or not. So they left, and quickly after, I started getting myself ready to lay down in bed. At some point, I got a text back from Ben, apologizing for taking so long and then asking what cleaning lady, with two question marks and an exclamation point. I typed back, Eliza, the Hispanic woman who came by and claimed she was the cleaning lady. That's when Ben called me with a concerned voice. He got more details from me after telling me there was no cleaning lady. That was the whole reason they hired me. I felt like I had been taken for a fool. No, more really? Importantly, was terrified that I may not have been in that house alone at that very moment. Oh, really? Ben told me to just hide in a bedroom and that he'd call the police for me. So we hung up, and I waited in the room for the police to arrive. I had Ben on FaceTime when the police arrived, so he could also talk to them. We all looked through the house together, from top to bottom, and we didn't see anyone. I told Ben the lady said she had a spare key, but he said he was confident that that was a lie, because they never made any spare keys. He was confident she simply snuck in when I was in the pool or outside in general. After we were sure there was no one in the house, the police left, but they made sure I locked all the doors and windows before they did so. I spoke with Ben a little longer, who was very comforting, and asked I just hold down the fort and call the police if anything else should happen. We hung up, and I went to bed. I locked the door, of course. I left the air conditioner off so I could hear any potential noises from outside of the room. Mm. As I lay right. awake, subconsciously waiting for a noise, I heard one from under the bed. Oh, hell no. It sounded like a squeak on the wood floor. <clears throat> I hopped out of the bed and looked under it. There were two people hiding underneath. One was the lady from earlier, Eliza. The other was some man, probably ten years older than her, with his hand over her mouth. He was getting busy? They she both... was getting busy with him? Ah! Uh! Jesus, my eyes. Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh, my God. But she was getting busy with the little... Oh, she on some freak stuff! Locked eyes with me. I screamed and I ran for the door. The moment that it took me to unlock the door and then open and shut it was more than I was comfortable with. As I did, I heard them crawling out from the bed. I ran outside to my car without my shoes and drove down the street, where I called the police. You dirty bastard. And I called Ben again. I was joking. I waited for police cars to pass and then I followed them. I once again searched the whole house and found no one. This time I didn't stick around for the night. Ben told me to go home and stay safe. Yeah, duh. The family booked a flight back home the next day, cutting their vacation short. The intruders were never identified. All that can be speculated is they walked in through the front door while I was in the pool because I didn't lock the door, and that they somehow knew the family would be gone. No further info is known. Are we done? Are we done here? Are we done here? Are we done here? Are we done here? We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Jesus, bro, Jesus. I can't close my eyes for a second without like some without me thinking about some little little nine year old girl who is just has a white dress on and black hair covering her face. Like I can't stop to think about that. Not like that, guys. Not like that. Not thinking about it like that. Like creepy wise, the creepy girl that you know, the cliche creepy girl that you know the hair is always covering her face. Not like that, you you sick little little something. But alright guys. Um, I didn't think three stories would be, you know, good enough, um, for this, you know, because you guys hit the like goal, you know, so I wanted to give you guys another video from Mr. Nightmare. So we are going to be reacting to Chuck E. Cheese Horror Stories. Now, I was looking at some of his other videos. He had like 10 um, paranormal activity uh, clips or whatever. He had like sleep paralysis and stuff. I'm not watching that. I'm not watching it because if I watch it, I'm I'm not sleeping tonight. I know that for a fact. I'm not watching that. If you guys want me to keep watching this video, keep watching his videos. I need. 
I need like 300 likes. I need like 300 likes. I'm being so serious. I can't. I can't do this. I can't do this. I, I just. I can't. But if you guys give me the 300 likes, I'll go ahead. I'll keep reacting to this guy, to Mr. Nightmare. But other than that, no, I can't. I can't. You see my eyes. This is this is the worst you have seen me tore up on this. Like this is the worst you have ever seen me on this channel. Not with my headphones fall, falling off when I was playing. I mean, wants to play or. When my neck was hurting, when I was, uh, oh my god, I just, when my neck was hurting, when I was playing Outlast, my neck was tore up, oh my god. But this is the worst ever. But, let's go right ahead and get right into some Chuck E. Cheese horror stories. Do y'all still go there? Do y'all still, I don't know how old y'all are, but like, but like, did y'all, did y'all used to go there? I went there a couple times, but I'm just curious, did y'all used to go there? Like, I know, I know they changed the mascot and everything. Like, did y'all go there? I heard some bad stuff about there. You know, like with the pizza and everything. Make it th but let's go. Come on. Remember Chuck E. Cheese? That old arcade with the singing animatronics? Of course you do. I just found out they went bankrupt recently. And made really? Me think back to my horrible experience there as a very little kid. I was no older than eight or nine. That was probably the same age. My third and last time ever at a Chuck E. Cheese. Nah, I was younger than that. Never mind. This specific location closed down years ago, but it used to be basically down the street from our old house. My mom took my little brother and I, and she let us roam free and do our own thing and play the games while she sat at one of the tables reading like most of the other parents. Okay. I was playing this clown game where you had to shoot the clown's teeth out with this little cannonball shooter. Sounds disgusting. I was playing the games that would get me the most tickets for the prizes. I finished the game again, and the ticket shot out from the ticket slot. Winner! That's when I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned and jumped in my seat. I was greeted with a giant Chuck E. Cheese mascot in my face. Oh, okay. He held out his hand for a high five, and naturally I gave him his high five with a smile. He then pointed at the tickets and gave me a thumbs up. I think I just continued laughing and smiling and said, yeah. Then he pointed at the tickets once more and motioned for me to follow him. So, I ripped the tickets from the slot and followed the giant mascot. As we walked across the main floor, a you know what? Of the kids I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. I am because he said he was eight or nine years old. But, God, Jesus, I'm blaming you. Where's your mom? I'm blaming your mom. Get your, get your mom to watch this video. Mama, come here. Come here. Sit down. Why in the hell haven't you taught your son? To not to talk to strangers or to to walk with a stranger when a stranger says, follow me. How the hell have you not taught your son that? Or your child that? How have you not taught them that? Huh? 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 Come on now. I'm scared for him for like Halloween time. If like, I don't know, like some guy dressed up as Michael Myers, he gonna be like, oh, come here, kid. I got, I got a knife for you to play with. Like, I'm scared for him now. Damn. Oh my God. Guy. Like six came up to him saying, Hey, Chucky, and he gave them both high fives. <laughs> I kept following him, wondering if he'd tell the other kids to follow, but he didn't. He would turn back every few seconds to make sure I was still following. Uh, make sure the mom not We made it across the main floor by the stage towards this back area where he waved me to follow him through this employee's only door. From what I remember about how I was feeling, let's just say a combination of weird and excited. We entered this narrow hallway. What you excited it felt for? kind of special for being allowed access back here. Keep in mind, I had the mind and maturity of a very young child. Sure, yeah. The mascot led me to this back room where he motioned for me to enter first. So I did. It was the small changing room type of room. It had a few lockers on one wall and one long bench extending half the length of the room. That was it. He entered the room and shut the door behind us. And I noticed he locked it. That's when I became confused and afraid. Chucky, what are you doing? He was taking me to get a bunch of free tickets. What could he possibly do in this empty room with me? Mm. He approached me, put his furry mascot hand on my shoulder, and then started rubbing from my shoulder to my arm. Then he seemed as though he tried to reach lower with both of his hands. Oh, hell no, 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 no. Now, I was about to make an uncle joke. I was about to make an uncle joke. I was about to, too. I was about to be like, oh, <laughs> his uncle, obviously. But, 
now, now, now I'm not joking. That's not, you're obviously a sick bastard. Chucky, if you're watching this, sit down. Let me talk to you for a second. Jesus, did I hear something? Okay, never mind. Chucky, let me talk to you for a second, you sick pervert. What is wrong with you? Huh? You and the mom is just, 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 just. I don't know which one to be more mad at. Obviously, you, Chucky, but, but. Well, uh, never mind. I'm stalling. Let's go. That's when the person in the suit lifted the mask off his head, revealing some sweaty, middle-aged man underneath. Figured. He started to remove the rest of the costume from himself as he told me to be quiet. I sat there watching, shaking, and plotting my way for the door. When oh, I thought man. he was distracted enough by the suit, I tried to run past him for the door, but he grabbed me and told me to stop. He offered me all the free tickets I wanted if I just behaved. I started to yell and pound on the door. He tried to cover my mouth, but I think he gave up when he realized it wasn't worth the risk for him. I unlocked the door and ran back down the hall in tears. I ran back to my mom, yelling at her about what just happened. She was distraught and went right to the front desk. The girl at the front desk seemed to be in a panic as well, and I think she called for her supervisor. Pretty soon, all the music was stopped and the place was put into a lockdown of sorts. <laughs> they said, everybody freeze! Their parents. A bunch of workers ran to the back section. And eventually police showed up outside. I had to give my whole story to a crowd of like six people and I was extremely nervous. The man in the Chucky suit was some random creep who snuck into the back section of the building to dress in one of the suits and apparently lure children to the back. Realizing and looking back at that now as a grown adult was disturbing and disgusting that I was the victim of a predator. I never found out if that monster was caught. Hey. I'm glad, truly glad that nothing happened to that boy. But that Chucky guy is obviously a sick little. Oh my! I I can't stand stories like that. Somebody's getting raped or something, or you know, a child. Oh my god! I, I can't stand stories like those. Now, the like this story, these stories are not bad because it's not like paranormal activity type stuff, you know. So these stories are not bad. So I'm not gonna be like tearing up or anything, like like how I did from you know the last video, but. But this it uh, it I won't I won't be that scared. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. I'm scared. All right. You heard it. You heard it first. All right. Number two. Number dos. Dos años. I used to work for Chuck E. Cheese very briefly when I was 21 years old. I was one of the janitors slash maintenance workers. Oh God. Know, not very awe inspiring. <laughs> I was broke as hell and needed money. All my job really entailed was cleaning tables and keeping the play areas generally clean. Sounds easy, but there was never really a time to just sit and take a breath. There was always something to clean or take care of. I would also be in charge of turning on and off the animatronics, opening the stage curtains, fixing busted arcade machines, and things of that nature. Okay. My shifts would always be later, from like 4 to 10 p.m. My location closed at 8 on weekdays and 9 on weekends. Ooh. I would stay an hour, sometimes two hours after, to get the place in top shape ready for the next day. You working a little too hard, my so friend. So one night, I was working past close like I usually did. Everyone had already left the building, including the other workers, so I was the last one in the building. I was dragging my cleaning cart around the arcade area. I had already turned off all the game machines. I was by that space-themed arcade machine where you had to press the button at the right moment to stop the light on the jackpot bulb. Okay. As I was passing by this machine, the space-themed music suddenly emits from the machine at a very loud volume, and all the lights start flashing again. I felt like my heart was in my throat, that's how much it startled me. I fiddled with my keys to access the control port of the machine to turn it off again. I had never seen anything like that happen before. It suddenly just freaked me out. Only because I was all alone in that big building pretty late at night. The weirdness didn't stop there, though. By this point in the night, I had already shut down the animatronics on the stage. So when I heard Chucky's pre-recorded laugh break the silence of the room, <laughs> my heart started pounding again. The Fuck laugh that, was bro. short and... Fuck that, yo. No, in the freaking way, bro. I'm just sorry, you know. I was just... Come pay me enough money. You can't pay me enough money to be in that situation. What in the fuck? 
God, Jesus, my my headphones are falling apart. <sighs> okay. All right. It was it was that laugh. That laugh got me. All right. The laugh got me. Okay. So okay, so now now we're now we're getting to my fear of you know paranormal activity stuff and all that other stuff. All right, so now now we're getting to that video. I thought it was just I thought this whole video was just gonna be you know just some kid getting touched on or something like that. I thought it was gonna be that, but no. Now we got some paranormal activity stuff. Okay, okay, I see what we're doing. I see what you're doing, Mr. Nightmare. Okay. It off. It almost sounded glitchy. I ditched my cleaning cart to go backstage and check on the animatronics. And I could see they were in their idle modes now, meaning they would move their limbs and heads around every so often. I would have to go to the control room to turn them off, but this was the second strange thing to happen that night. I started getting paranoid that someone else was in the building with me, but that thought was interrupted when I noticed that the Chucky animatronic was facing me and its head angled down perfectly to look as though it was looking at me. Oh hell no. Oh bizarre. mother... Bizarre that I was finding it that disturbing. I'm not crazy, but for my own peace of mind, with my eyes on the Chucky animatronic, I walked past it, closer to the control room. I waited there for a few seconds, and then the animatronic spun 90 degrees to face me once more, perfectly. I swear it was once again looking right at me, and then the laughter emitted once again from the animatronic. <laughs> but in a creepy, glitchy, cut-off manner, this time much louder, obviously because I was right next to it. I ran to the control room to hit the switch to turn everything off on the stage once more. I left the control room, and the Chucky animatronic was still facing the direction it was moments before. Okay. I left the stage through the curtain and just felt uneasy. I was starting to think maybe it was all just getting to my head. But that's when I heard the horrible laugh again come from the stage behind the curtains. <laughs> that was the last straw. I you took think? my card, clocked out, and left. I texted my boss the next day that I had to leave early because I was feeling extremely sick. He said it wasn't a problem, but he never mentioned anything about the animatronics being left on. And when I asked him if the animatronics had some kind of motion detecting feature to look at people, he said no, they didn't. I'm not the most superstitious guy, but I firmly believe I wasn't the only presence in that building that night. And I don't mean there was another person in there. It just had to be a paranormal activity story. It just had to be one. Of course it did. Of course it had to be. Alright, story number three. Let's go. This is a story from my childhood that I don't like to look back on too much. I was 13. My mom brought my two little sisters and I to Chuck E. Cheese one evening. Or a cake My kid. sisters are four and six years younger than me. So it was more for them, and my mom just wanted me to come along. My mom was playing games with my sisters, so I went to do my own thing. It was my only time ever at Chuck E. Cheese, so I was trying to play every game at least once. Eventually a worker in a red polo shirt came up to me. He was in his lower to mid-twenties, I'd say. He didn't seem that old. He asked me if I wanted some more tokens. I said, yeah, sure. He's not gonna lose he told her. me to follow him. Oh, no. He led oh. me through this sketchy back door, which led to a back exit. This story again? I asked him where he was leading me. What the he hell? He said to his truck. What the hell? He told hell? me not to tell anyone, but that he had access to all the tokens he wanted, and just kept piles of them in his car. I stopped following when I realized he was leading me to his car. I told him my mom would be mad. Yeah. He tried to push that I follow him a little more, but gave up. Before I walked back inside, he asked for my AIM username. And I gave it to him, always excited for new friends on AIM. Wait, his what? For what the hell is that? Know, AIM? AIM was an instant messenger that was all the rage before smartphones and texting really became a thing. Oh, okay, okay. I don't remember his username. All I know it was something with his name in it, which was Ben. I would sign on to AIM every single night, including that night after Chuck E. Cheese. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of AIM. I have, ne I have never heard of that. Like, what? That's... I don't know what time period this was, but... That's, that's just weird, but... I signed in, and I had a few friends online. Next thing I knew, I got a message from Ben. Oh, so God. I added him to my buddy list. He said, hey, it's Ben from earlier. Of course I it is. I replied, what's up? Weirdo. And we started chatting. 
He chatted with me as if we were good friends already. I asked him how he was able to get all the tokens he wanted, and he said it's easy when you work there. He told me he was going to come to my house that night with a bunch of tokens. I told him, no, it's okay. And he told me, no, it's fine. You live really close to me anyway. I replied, how do you know where I live? And he said he followed my mom's van on our way home. I blocked his account immediately. I was beyond scared. I told my friends about it on AIM. Some of them said I should tell my parents or call the police. But I waited. Maybe he was bluffing. But no, he wasn't. I heard a truck pull up outside through my open window. I looked out the window and saw the black truck that Ben guy was leading me towards earlier. I saw him get out from the truck and I know he spotted me because he started walking over to my window. I pulled the window in and locked it and then shut the blind. Oh, hell no. By that point he was already halfway to my window and he was waving his arms at me. I ran to my mom to tell her. She didn't find it funny thinking I was kidding at first. But I convinced her after she looked out the window and saw the black truck. Ma. Ma. The kid is 13 years old. He's in like 7th or 8th grade. Why? Unless, unless, you know, he's like a little prankster or whatever. But why would he be joking around about something like that? Huh? Huh? I could see if the kid was like, I don't know, six or seven years old. He'd be like, hey, mom, look outside. There's somebody outside. I could see if it's something like that. But like, really? Come on now. I began to speed down the road. My mom wanted me to show her the aim conversation, but I couldn't. As I had deleted him off my buddy list and blocked him. My parents called the police, of course. But that was just for peace of mind. They couldn't do anything besides make a report. Ah, oh, damn. The next day, my mom called the Chuck E. Cheese and asked about a Ben. They said they had no Bens who worked there. There were also no employees matching that guy's description. Oh, my God. The Chuck E. Cheese eventually handed the CCTV footage from the day before to the police department for an investigation, which turned up no results. What? My family never went to a Chuck E. Cheese ever again. Wait, they never seen them? They never seen him there? Damn, he must have took the recording or something. Like, what? All right, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we don't have to keep playing this. We don't have to, I'm not sitting there watching that for like... As a matter of fact, y'all can get off my screen. Y'all can get off my screen. Y'all can get off my screen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kiss, kiss. Thank you. All right, bye. Oh, mother. Oh, God. Jesus. I'm not trying to look at those animatronics, whatever the hell you call it, for all that time. Hell no. 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 Oh, okay. But anyway, guys, that is going to just about wrap up this video of me reacting to Mr. Nightmare, the worst and the scariest, not worst like this is the worst video I ever did, but like the scariest thing, no, scariest video I have ever made. I really have to sit here and listen to these scary stories that I don't even like want to pursue myself in. That I have no desire to do so so that makes it even worse now if you guys want to see more of uh, mr. nightmare me reacting to his stories like I said I need 300 likes I need 300 likes I can't keep I can't it's 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 hard with him it's I'm gonna have nightmares or something I, I promise you that I promise you I am but in the meantime in the meantime hey come here Mama, come here. Chucky, come here. Actually, Chucky, get your... Get, get your... Mother... Uh... Get out of here! Go! Go! God, Jesus, I messed up. Hold up, sorry. Alright, anyway. Chucky, get out of here. Go. Leave. Fly. Tell her we got the channel. Tell her we got the channel, alright? Okay? Not Chucky. Don't don't tell him. And the guy in the polo shirt, don't, don't tell him either. Don't tell that, you know, sweaty guy, you know, mid-50s, whatever. Don't tell him either, all right? Just, we want to keep this channel clean and, you know, some positive energy. Besides the fact that I always curse all the time. But, but, just positive, you know? 
all right we don't need those people just tell a friend we got the channel a friend you know someone you trust okay okay spread the word okay all right okay okay cool deuces